Pre-Calc 12, Chapter 3.5. We're going to look at the last of the transformations. This one is called an inverse relation. We don't say inverse function yet because we must test to see if it is actually a function. And this last transformation is reflecting on the line y is equal to x. So one way to graph the inverse relation is to take the key points and swap the x and y and plot them. Then we just mirror the curve between the key points. So let's look at an example. We have this curve and we take key points and reflect it on the y is equal to x axis. So this point is 1, 2, 3 away, 1, 2, 3 away. This point is 1, 2, 1, 2. And this one's here. I'm reflecting on the axis. You can also reflect the point. Here we have point 1, 2, and we just convert it to point 2, 1. And one and a half, half and a one. And now we just join the points. Okay, the domain of F is negative four to two. And the range is negative one to three. All we have to do is swap the domain and range. So we have negative one to three and negative four to two. And let's just look at this. Our x for g is negative 1 and to 3. And we look at the y, we go from negative 4 to 2. If we don't have this line, you can draw that line. And you can check the reflection and then making sure that the corresponding points are equidistant and perpendicular to y is equal to x. We can do the inverse algebraically as well. So here we have a line y is equal to 3x plus 7. We swap the x and y's first. Then we solve for y. And last step. So this is called the inverse function. And it's a function because this is a line. Another question that you might get is, are y equals 2x minus 4 and y equals 1 half x plus 6 inverses of each other? Well, you need to find the inverse of 1 and then just see if it's equal to the other one. So let's do x equals 2y minus 4, then solve for y. 2y equals x plus 4, y is equal to x plus 4 over 2, and clearly that does not equal y is equal to 1 half x plus 6. So they are not inverses of each other. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example. So we have two x's to deal with here, but that's okay. x equals 2y minus 9 over 3y minus 5. And we solve for y. We need to bring this over to the other side. So we have 3xy minus 5x equals 2y minus 9. So we're multiplying the denominator to the left-hand side and expanding. Now we need to move all the y terms to the left-hand side. 3xy minus 2y. And when we move the x over to the other side, it becomes positive. Now we factor out the y. And we divide both sides by this factor. Okay, so that's all you have to do. This is a rational function, so the inverse is a function. 
Let's look at another complicated example. We have y is equal to x minus 3 squared plus 5. So that's a parabola, or if you prefer, a quadratic. We swap x and y. So we have x equals y minus 3 squared plus 5. We isolate y. So x minus 5 equals y minus 3 squared. We take the square root of both sides. We have plus or minus square root x minus 5 equals y minus 3. And then we isolate y. So this is 3 plus or minus the square root of x minus 5. Now, because we have a plus or minus, this is no longer a function. This is a relation. So the inverse is a relation. And let's plot y is equal to x. When we reflect this, we get this. So we take this point, move it over here, take this point, move it over here, take this point, reflect it over here. And we can see that this does not pass the vertical line test. That's why it's a relation and not a function. We can determine whether our inverse is going to be a relation or a function by checking the original function. Since we are mirroring this vertical line, it becomes a horizontal line for the original function. So if we mirror this vertical line, we get this. And you can see that this line is a horizontal line. So we call this a horizontal line test for the original function. If we look at our previous function, if we look at this graph, the inverse does not pass the vertical line test. So it's a relation. The original one is a function, but if we do a horizontal line test on this function, it doesn't pass it. So we can say that this inverse is not a function right away by doing a horizontal line test on the original function. If that's too complicated, just do a vertical line test on the inverse relation. So that completes this lesson.